Hey, Zash from Outlier. Today we're going to talk about overlearning. So the first question on your mind is, what is overlearning? Well, overlearning is when you go over stuff that you've already learned before. So I've, there's maybe a sentence, a paragraph, a vocabulary, grammar point, whatever it is. I've, I've already, I've learned it. I kind of know it. But overlearning is when you take that same thing and then you just go over and over and over again. You just add a lot of repetition. And studies have shown that this will drive this point deep into your brain. So overlearning is a good thing. Well, it's a good thing within the right context. One of the things that they found was that any kind of motor skill that you want to practice, uh, is overlearning is very suited to doing uh, motor skill related stuff. So it should be popping in your mind already, but pronunciation, right? Practicing your pronunciation is a motor skill. So what does that mean? That means overlearning is really good for practicing pronunciation. Now, I have some good news here. Pronunciation isn't just pronunciation. Grammar is actually pronunciation. And in fact, we're going to make a course actually for learning Chinese grammar using sentence chorusing to where we take the main grammar points and you just for each of those grammar points, there'll be maybe two or three sentences, and you just take those sentences and you just pound them into your brain. <clears throat> and you will totally get a feel for the grammar. So instead of like thinking, oh, wait, this is subject, uh, wait, first person, singular, uh, and stuff like that, you'll, you'll, just be, you'll feel it like you do with your own language, right? That's the whole idea. Uh, we're not quite there yet, so we're, we're giving you kind of the idea here in this overlearning video. With this overlearning, how do we, how do I apply overlearning to my textbook? You just told me that it's audio, right? It's not I, it's not really for word lists. Exactly, that's exactly right. So, what you want to do is you want to have a textbook where you have dialogues and the dialogues have audio. Now, John did a video on this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of kind of like recap what he talked about. And the reason I'm the reason I'm doing this is because it's all the problems I still have with my Chinese come from doing exactly what I'm about to tell you. So instead of, you know, listening to the audio first, what I would do is I would go read the dialogue several times. Any words that weren't in there, I would go write them down and then look them up and then memorize them and then go back and read the dialogue again and then listen to it. But this is completely the wrong way to do it. The reason it's completely the wrong way to do it is because what you're actually doing is you're, you're short circuiting all the the gain that you would get had you started off with just listening and repeating to the dialogue. Now, why, why is that? Well, a lot of learners prefer written language over spoken. Why? Because they can, they, in their minds anyway, they can control it. Like if I need to write an A, I just write an A, right? I know how to do that. It's very easy. It's very quick to learn. But writing an A and being able to say that the actual A in that language you're learning at the right time are completely two different things. And, and learning how to write too early can really damage your pronunciation. So what you want to do is you want to take that dialogue and you want to listen to it over and over again. Not just listen to it, but you want to listen and repeat. And if the whole dialogue is too much for you to do this, and that if, if, if there's a bunch of new stuff in the dialogue, that's going to be the case, right? If, if you know everything in the dialogue but two words, then listen to the whole dialogue probably would be pretty easy for you. But this is, that's just a, a normal, you know, does this thing fit my current level of Chinese? So you're probably going to want to take your dialogue, break it into sentences. And if that's too hard, then break it into half sentences or quarter sentences. It really doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is that you get something out of it. So you take those, take that dialogue, do your first sentence, you chorus this thing. Like for me, if it, if it were me, I, I do, if I'm learning a sentence by chorusing, I do a thousand reps. Uh, I don't do a thousand reps at one time. I'd go crazy. But what I do is I make five minute chunks and every day I do five minutes. And if it's 250, say there's 250 reps in that five minutes, then I do that one four times until I get a thousand. Take those, do each sentence. Then go back, once you've got all these sentences down, start doing the dialogue because there's actual gain, there's a gain to, to putting all these things together. Because when you do a whole dialogue, you have things that are above sentence level going on. For one, you have prosody, which is just a fancy way of saying, you know, the intonation, right? So you want to be able to copy the intonation, how, how the intonation of one sentence relates to the intonation of another sentence. Uh, you also have... Uh, how, you'll, you'll learn how to connect ideas together. For instance, if the dialogue is a story, 
Uh, you'll learn how to tell stories. If the dialogue is just, you know, two people sitting down having breakfast, well, then you'll, you'll, you'll learn how to have a breakfast conversation. Right, not just words that appear in that conversation, but you'll actually learn how to have this kind of conversation. Um, so the overlearning aspect here is this re repetition, repeating over and over and over again these sentences that maybe you've already learned, but you want to overlearn them to like just drive them deep into your consciousness. And I can tell you because I've done this before a bunch of times, it works and it works really well. And you can get on the internet and do searches on it, and you'll find other people come to the same conclusion. It'll also drastically if, if you have bad pronunciation it'll drastically improve your pronunciation and if you are one of these people with bad pronunciation when you listen to your dialogue or your sentence do not under any circumstance think about how to write the word because the the thought of how how to write that word is why your pronunciation is wrong so you want to just listen to the sounds go with them and just repeat them as best as you can and the more you listen to it the easier it'll be Okay, so if overlearning is such a great thing and everybody's doing it, then, then why don't we just do that all the time? Well, the answer to that question is it's exhausting and it's easy to get burned out. So when you do overlearning sessions, what you're, wanting, what you're gonna wanna do is keep, you, you have to do experiments. I always say this, experiment. Well, that's because what works for Jay may not work for Janice. You, know, you, need, to, you need to get what works for you. And the only way to do that is to experiment. So you're gonna to wanna to experiment with like, how long am I gonna spend on this? Like if I spend 10 minutes and I go crazy, well then I don't need to be spending 10 minutes. But if I do 10 minutes and it's easy, then maybe I can do 20 minutes, right? So keep a notebook, experiment on different amounts of time of overlearning, and then you'll figure out you know, what the sweet spot is. Maybe it's 18 and a half minutes, I don't know. It, just, it depends on you, it depends on your, what you're doing with the rest of your day and all this kind of thing. So yeah. Overlearning is great, but it's also it could also burn you out, and you really don't want to do that. One one thing about the one one characteristic of a successful language learner is that they do sustainable things. You know, things that will will take you through all the way to the end. Like I have a friend, I won't, I won't say his name, but I have a friend who, like back in the day when I was learning Chinese characters, I would learn like three characters a day, or three to five characters a day. He just decided I'm gonna learn two thousand characters in one week. So he spent this very miserable week trying to memorize thousands of characters and he ended up quitting learning Chinese after that because it just didn't work. So the, this is the whole turtle versus the rabbit race, right? And the turtle usually wins. So to recap, you want to overlearn, meaning take some things that you already know how to do and then go do them even more. And for applying this to the Chinese learning textbooks, the best way to do this is to, to apply it to dialogues, audio dialogues. Do the audio first, break it down as a small unit as you need, you know, probably sentence or maybe half sentence. Do your chorusing, then do the whole dialogue, do shadowing over the whole, whole dialogue. And you'll, at the end, you will just totally own this dialogue. You'll, like anybody who brings up anything remotely related to that dialogue, boom, you're just going to be able to shoot it right out there. So that's overlearning and how to apply it to textbooks. And that's a wrap. See you guys next time.